Okay. So, let us move on to the final phase of radiation that is radiation 5 that is. Okay. So, here we have three wall enclosure. So, if I go to three wall enclosure, so what are the see one important thing another important thing which we need to realize the resist electrical resistance analogy between radiation and conduction. Even our students in our NSM made a mistake in this that is especially we have to be careful when I have a conduction radiation combined problem. Remember in radiation the potential is emissive power and radiosity and in conduction the potential is temperature. So, I cannot combine conduction and radiation problem both the resistances that resistance in conduction is having potentials of temperature and the current is heat flux no, no problem. Here also current is heat flux only, but the potential is emissive power we should not forget this. This is the basic difference between the electrical resistance analogy in radiation and conduction. This is this is where we get into trouble usually when we have conduction radiation combined problem we get into trouble. We had uh, unknowingly we had given a problem in the NSM and 50 percent of our class had goofed up this problem by combining the resistances that is why I am mentioning this. Okay. So, we have now potentials what are the potentials one can conceive of E B 1 J 1. Okay. I will not construct this first E B 1 J 1 then E B 2 J 2 E B 3 J 3. Why am I doing this? Because I have three surfaces I should be having three surface resistances. So, those three surface resistances are 1 minus epsilon 1 epsilon 1 a 1, 1 minus epsilon 3 a 3, 1 minus epsilon 2 a 2 epsilon 2. So, I have three surface resistances. Now, these radiosities j 1, j 2, j 3 are interacting with each other that is j 1 is interacting with j 2 and j 2 is interacting with j 3, j 3 is interacting with j 1 with individual space resistances. So, j 1 has to interact with j 2 means what is the space resistance between 1 and 2? It has to be 1 upon a 1 f 1 2 or a 2 f 2 1 pointer. Okay. So, I have this is 1 upon a 1 f 1 2. Okay. The space resistance for between 1 and 3 is 1 upon a 1 f 1 3 and the space resistance between a 2 f 2 3 is 1 upon a 2 f 2 3 that is all. So, it goes logically now, what am I doing is I am applying Kirchhoff's law. If I apply Kirchhoff's law, this time Kirchhoff's law is not the Kirchhoff's law for radiation, Kirchhoff's law for electricity, okay, for electrical circuits. So, that is V equal to voltage equal to current into resistance that is all I am applying. So, what is that? Let me go through this that is I take three nodes J 1, J 2, J 3 nodes at each node I say that the input current whatever is coming is the summation of the current is. 0 the algebraic sum of the currents at each node must be 0 that is all. Current means what? Here it is heat flux. So, E B 1 minus J 1 upon R 1 current has to flow in this direction. So, this has to be that is the that is the direction assume it may be wrong if it is wrong it will come out as negative. So, I do not have to worry about that I think we have done this in electrical circuits I do not think I need to harp this again. So, E B 1 minus J 1 upon R 1 plus J 2 minus J 1 why because current again has to go towards the node J 1 and plus J 3 minus J 1 upon R 1 3. So, that is equal to 0. Similarly, if I do for J 3 and J 2 I am going to get 3 equations. So, total how many equations I have? 3 equations. Typically, if I know the temperature, if I know the temperature of these 3 surfaces emissivity that is what I have taken. I have taken that emissivity is known, surface area is known and temperature of the body is known. So, I get if I know the temperature of the body what is E B 1? Sigma T 1 to the power of 4, sigma T 2 to the power of 4, sigma T 3 to the power of 4. So, I know E B 1, E B 2, E B 3. Do I know R 1, R 1, 2, R 1, 3? Yes, because 1 minus epsilon 1, epsilon 1 A 1 and 1 minus epsilon, epsilons and A's are known mean known means R 1, R 2, R 3 I know that is surface resistances are known. 
do I know f 1 2, f 1 3, f 1 4 sorry f 1 3, f 1, f 2 3 and f what is the other one f 1 2, do I know these 3? I can compute from the geometry I can compute this, this is not an issue. So, if I come that means I know all resistances, I know all emissive powers, what are unknowns then in these 3 equations j 1, j 2, j 3, I have 3 equations, 3 unknowns if I solve them I will get j 1, j 2, j 3. Okay. So, from there there is a problem here, uh, I do not think I need to spend time on this problem, do you think this problem I need to solve, because it is just, yeah we if time permits we will come back to this, but actually na, you have a cylinder, the top surface is 1, bottom surface is 2 and the circumferential surface is 3. So, I have surface 1, surface 2 and surface 3. 1 and 2 are having emissivities of 0 0.8 and 0 0.4, 3 is having an emissivity of 1, it is black and temperatures are 1 is 700 and the bottom wall is 500 and the circumferential surface, circular surface is 400 Kelvin. So, I can whatever I just derived the same circuit is valid. Okay. So, because they, there are 3 surfaces, it need not be triangular only, as long as there are 3 surfaces, whichever shape you can think of that is applicable. Okay. So, if you put that, so if you if you just take that and you have the equation, so that is E B 1 minus J 1, E B 1 you know, E B 2 you know, E B 3 you know okay. and 1 minus epsilon 1, these 3 you can compute okay. and now all that you need to do is you have to compute f 1 2, f 1 3 and f 2 3, f 1 1 is 0 okay, because what is 1? The top surface 1 is f 1 1 is 0 and now you get f 1 2 and f 1 3. How do I get f 1 2? That is top surface to bottom surface 1 to 2, it is a function of r i and r j that is the radius of the top surface and the radius of the bottom surface and the distance between the two surfaces. So, that is r i, r j and s. Yes, if I plug in all this in this relation, you are going to get 0.38. So, you, you get 0.38 as f 1 2, now you will get f 1 3 as 0.62, but you need f 3 1. So, how do I get? That is I will put reciprocity rule, I get f 3 1 equal to a 1 f 1 3 upon a 3, you get 0.31. So, now you got f 1 2, f 1 3 and f 3 1. Do I need anything else? That is it, that much is sufficient for me. So, now if I go ahead and substitute for and do I need, yeah, why have I not done f 2 3 here? f 1 3 and f 2 3 are symmetric, by symmetric rule f 1 3 and f 2 3 are same, that is why I have not set up or I have not computed again f 2 3 separately, is that okay? okay. So, now if I substitute all these values, I am going to get 3 equations and I am going to get j 1, j 2, j 3. Having got j 1, j 2, j 3, this is important step, yeah, this problem has relevance in this step, otherwise you may miss that. That is q dot 1 equal to a 1 into f 1 2 j 1 minus j 2 plus f 1 3 into j 1 minus j 3. How did I get this? From this, from this, okay that is j 1 minus, this is the net heat flux. See, 1 is interacting with 2 and 3. So, j 1 minus j 2, if I take j, then I do not have to take the space resistance, sorry, surface resistance. And, and if I take 1 and 3, I do not have to take, if I take j 1 and j 3, I do not have to take the space resistance again for 1 and 3. So, that is what I have done here. So, a 1, j 1 minus j 2 upon 1 upon a 1 f 1 2 plus j 1 minus j 3 upon f 1, 1 upon a 1 f 1 3, that gives me 27.6 kilowatt. Similarly, for q 2, I get minus 2.13 kilowatt and q 3, I get minus 25.5 kilowatt. So, the net heat flux should be, the algebraic sum of all this should be 0, the net heat transfer, that is by conservation of energy. So, you get q 1 dot 1 that means it is getting what is that what is happening q dot 1 see you see the temperatures you will be able to understand the temperature t1 is at higher temperature t2 is at lower temperature and t3 is t3 
still lower temperature. So, q 1 2 that is q dot 1, what is happening q dot 1? q dot 1 is coming out to be positive, that means it is it is radiating heat, q 2 is receiving heat and q 3 are also receiving heat, okay? that is the interpretation of plus and minus sign. With this, we will, there is another problem here in which what we have done is another important concept here is insulated. If it is insulated, heat flux is 0. If heat flux is 0, E B 3 equal to J 3. Okay? So, with that, uh, if you, I think you are able to see that. Okay? So, with that, I will move on to next concept called radiation shields. So, this I will be going really breezing through. So, let me see how fast I can go. So, here I have one surface, I have another surface. I have mentioned this already in case of super insulator in uh, while building super insulator. So, these are E B 1 and E B 2. If there was no shield, I would have had 1 minus epsilon 1, epsilon 1 A 1, 1 minus epsilon 2, epsilon 2 A 2. But now, I have a shield. So, the resistance between these two space resistance is 1 upon A 1 F 1 3, here space resistance is 1 upon A 3 F 3 2. Now, what is this surface resistance on this side? That is 1 minus epsilon 3 comma 1. The side which is facing 1 is called 3 comma 1. The side which is facing 2 is called 3 comma 2. 1 minus epsilon 3 1 upon epsilon 3 1 A 3 and 1 minus epsilon 3 2 epsilon 3 2 A 1. So, these are the two resistances which are added because of adding the shielding material. And if I play with my epsilon properly, I should be able to arrest the heat transfer from one surface 1 to surface 2. If I have to have this resistance, what should be my epsilon? Low or high? Low. If the epsilon is low, that means my, my resistance will be high. If epsilon has to be low, means typically reflectivity has to be very high. Transmissivity is 0. So, reflectivity has to be for shielding material you have to again use aluminum foil. I am going back to my chapati example. Okay? So, that is why we use aluminum foil, because we are using it as a radiation shield. Okay? So, these are the resistances. So, I have taken, if I take A 1 equal to A 2 equal to A 3 and F 1 2 equal to F 3 2 equal to 1, the above equation reduces to this. So, if there is no shield, I would have had this heat transfer. If there is a shield, this is the additional resistance which has come into picture. Now, if I have n shields, if I have n shields, these many n, um, n shields will be, n resistances should be added up. So, those resistances are this. So, q dot 1 2 with 1 shield equal to 1 upon n plus 1 into q dot 1 2 no shield under the condition that epsilon 1 equal to epsilon 2 equal to epsilon 3 comma 1 equal to epsilon 3 comma 2. This only says that if I use 1 shield, the rate of the radiation heat transfer has become half. If I use 2, it becomes 1 third. If I become 9, if I use 9 shields, it becomes 1 tenth. Like that, if you have infinite shield, if infinite number of shields, there should be no more heat transfer radiated to the other plate. That is precisely what we are doing in super insulator. Okay? So, with this radiation shield concept, I know I have gone very fast, but I request you to go through these steps. There is nothing great in this. It is just putting resistances. So, there is nothing great in terms of concept there. So, I request you to see and there is a problem again set up. When there is no shield, you have 3625 watts per meter squared. When you have a shield, you get 806 watts per meter squared because emissivities are different. Now, you can put in Excel sheet and play with these emissivities and see what happens to heat flux. Okay? So, now an important concept I want to touch upon before we uh, move on to tutorials. Okay? So, that is radiation effect in temperature measurement. Why I am wanting to emphasize this more because we always believe that if I put a thermocouple or a thermometer anywhere, it is going to give me a temperature, not so. Under what conditions the thermocouple and thermometer is going to be representative of the temperature what I want to measure? That is very important. How will I get that? So, now let us just take a thermometer or a thermocouple which is inserted in a pipe. Okay, which is inserted in a pipe. What is that I am doing? I am doing energy balance for this thermocouple bead or the thermometer bulb. That is, there are, there are, I am neglecting conduction. So, 
convection see what is happening here there is thermocouple which is going to show the temperature and fluid is having its own temperature which is what I want to measure through thermocouple and wall T wall is the wall temperature it is having wall temperature what is that it is happening I am assuming that the fluid temperature is very high fluid temperature is very high and wall temperature is definitely lower than the fluid temperature and thermocouple has to pick up the fluid temperature ok. So, now the heat transfer is from fluid to the thermocouple fluid to the thermocouple and there might be some radiative heat transfer between the wall and the thermocouple. Now, if I set the energy balance between the thermocouple or the thermometer between the thermocouple and the thermometer and the fluid and the wall what is happening convective heat transfer has to be equated to the radiative heat transfer that means whatever the thermocouple is receiving heat by convection it has to be balanced by the radiative heat transfer between the thermocouple and the walls of the pipe. How do I do that? Heat transfer convection, heat transfer coefficient into T f that is the fluid temperature minus T thermocouple, T thermocouple that is the thermocouple is not going to show the same temperature as the fluid there is a temperature difference. Why? Why? Because there is convective heat transfer coefficient that is H there is a heat transfer between the fluid and my thermocouple or the thermometer. Now, that should be equal to epsilon thermometer that is you see here I had mentioned this when I inserted a small Professor Arun had given as an example when I put a tennis ball in this room what matters is the emissivity of the tennis ball not the emissivity of the walls precisely that is what I am doing here that is here the radiative heat transfer I have taken the emissivity of the thermocouple only it does not matter what is the emissivity of the pipe wall assuming that here what is the assumption I have invoked is that my thermocouple bead or the thermocouple thermometer bulb is very much smaller compared to the pipe size or the cavity in which it has been enclosed. So, that is epsilon of the thermo thermometer or the thermocouple into sigma into T thermocouple to the power of 4 minus T wall to the power of 4. Now, let us rearrange this little bit little differently that is I get T f equal to T thermocouple plus epsilon thermocouple into sigma T thermocouple to the power of 4 minus T wall to the power of 4 upon H. So, you see ideally what is that I am expecting whenever I insert a thermocouple I expect that my thermocouple is going to show the fluid temperature not always so why because of this correction term when will fluid temperature be equal to thermocouple temperature or the other way around when will be the thermocouple temperature equal to the fluid temperature when the heat transfer coefficient is very high only for high speed flows high speed means not a very high speed what I mean is when the velocities are reasonably high for example, air velocity is let us say around 3 to 4 meters per second the heat transfer coefficient between my thermocouple and the fluid or fluid which is flowing over the thermocouple only when h is high that is for example, if the water is flowing this radiation error radiation effect error will be very small, but if it is air and the velocities are low h will be low then this error will be very high. So, or the deviation error may not be the right term the deviation would be high. So, if I have to keep the deviation low I have to keep this h high and the epsilon that is the emissivity of the thermocouple has to be as low as possible. If I have to keep the emissivity low means what should I keep what should I what what can I control I can only control reflectivity all solid surfaces as I said transmissivity is 0 if, if it is highly flashing reflecting surface then reflectivity is high and emissivity is low, but that is not always possible to maintain because once I insert it if there is a fluid it gets rusted then naturally that glaziness is lost and it becomes diffuse. So, you have this deviation we need to take note on I think I think we have 5 more minutes. No? So, we I will just quickly give you the feel of this deviation or the error not error is the right, the right term although I am I am just using it just for the heck of it. I will just give the feel of that deviation with the numbers. I have a problem in which wall is maintained at 400 Kelvin and the temperature reading that is the thermocouple has is 650 degree Celsius who has given some thermocouple reading is 650 what is that I am looking for I am looking for fluid temperature and the emissivity of this bead is 0.6 Kelvin. So, now if I plug in this here and of course, 
heat transfer coefficient has been given 8, 80 watts per meter square degree Celsius. It is significantly high. It is not natural convection, it is forced convection and I, we can take this number as for air may be around 4 to 5 meters per second. So, if I plug in these numbers and with the thermocouple temperature as 650 Kelvin and wall temperature is 400, you see what is the deviation I get 65 degree Celsius. If the H is low, let us say I am taking a still room and H is low means in, we said that in the, under natural convection conditions H can be as low as 5 to 10, kilo, 10 watts per meter square degree Celsius. If I put in 10, if I put in 10 here what will happen? 8 times my deviation will go up that means 65 into 8. So, imagine the deviation between the fluid temperature and the thermocouple temperature. So, the point what I want to emphasize is that not always when you insert a thermocouple or a thermometer anywhere and everywhere, it is going to measure the temperature what it is intended for. That is the point what we want to drive home here. If it is a low velocity flow or a natural convection, most of the times measuring accurately the temperature is not an easy task. So, we need to keep this in mind because we, you may think that I will go ahead and measure, I will try to go ahead and try to quantify this H and try to quantify this epsilon and make the correction. Most of the times it is just not possible simply because I will not be able to compute this H and epsilon thermo, epsilon thermocouple that accurately and also it varies with, I mean it changes with epsilon especially changes with time. So, there are various ways to uh, circumvent this problem, let us not get into that, but for now what is important is there is going to be deviation where in which you have to control H and epsilon.